What happens when I hold you, Jenna? What happens when you ask me to hold you again? I have to kiss you. He's got a white face mask on, black on black. He's got a black on black coat or black on black shirt. Black on black coat. Oh my God, someone is down by Best Buy Mobile. You need to get ambulance here. They're already being dispatched. Another home. shooting, another safe part of American life shattered by violence. The gunman was armed with an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. Police say the killer made a beeline from his car in the parking lot through Macy's. By the time he got to the food court, he was already firing. Killing 54-year-old hospice nurse Cindy Ann Yule, who was Christmas shopping. And 45-year-old Stephen Forsyth, a father of two who ran a business in the mall. It appeared that the suspect's rifle did jam while he was attacking individuals in the food court. Police say he bolted down a flight of stairs, got his rifle working again, and killed himself near J.C. Penney's. Today, everyone agreed it was a miracle only two people were killed. So this is my mom's typewriter. 
She used this in college and kept it all these years and, you know, took really good care of it. And I used to play with it when I was a kid. These are just two hiking books that she loaned me. I plan to do a lot of hiking this summer and um, I don't know. I like having them here. They definitely, it's a little piece of her. This painting, I didn't realize actually how many little things <laughs> around here kind of remind me of her. It makes me sad just going through this stuff, but yeah, it's past tense because she's, you know, she's gone. She's dead now. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think of her as being here and like, and alive and I don't know. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> And I saved a couple of these from the memorial. I said, I've been told before that no matter what happens, no one can replace your mother. But it wasn't until now that I fully understand what that means. I said, I have realized that inevitably, somehow this will change me. How exactly, I'm not quite sure yet. I hate crying about this. <laughs> But I said, that wasn't part of the speech. <laughs> and I said, I said, I'm, I certainly was not ready to lose her, but I'm honored to be the daughter of such an incredible woman. And I will never forget who she taught me to be. I found out about the shooting, actually reading updates on Twitter as things were coming in. And I called my mom, didn't hear an answer from her, which was typical. Called the house and talked with my stepdad, Robert. He also said he hadn't heard from her, but that she had gone shopping. So I knew she would be a Clackamas, but I just figured that stuff never happens to your family. Well, let's see. We have so much. Yeah, where do you start? We took lots of pictures. We did a lot. We, we traveled a lot. We played a lot. Hiked, hiked, hiked. Oh, Lake Quinault. That was fun. Oh, Fiji. Fiji was good. And then Essex, Montana. That was even a better time. <laughs> Snow camping. <laughs> there she is. God damn, we had a good time. She's working in my shed in the back. She popped in and she said, well, I'm getting ready to go shopping for Christmas. And we, we said goodbye. It's realistic, we always. It was a good goodbye. It was an exceptionally good goodbye. You know, I remember saying, oh, wait a minute, sweetheart, I've got something I want you to do. And then I go, oh, Jesus, can't think of what it is. But anyway, so go ahead and go. I'll think of it. And it was a simple thing, like just taking the plastic in to be recycled. But, you know, I, I always think that, you know, if I could have remembered that, remembered that, and it would have slowed her down by a couple of minutes, she wouldn't have been standing where she was. Different, would have been different. Everything would have been different. What are you going to do? <sighs> Senator Jenny Burdick, good morning. Good morning. So, Jenny, you're working on a gun control bill that would expand Oregon's background checks to include sales between private individuals. Correct. It's we already have it for gun shows, which many states don't. And actually, that was my initiative that uh, got that in place. What's your support like for the bill? Uh, very strong support from the gun-owning community, from law enforcement, 
uh, there's, I mean, if, you know, some polling shows over 90 percent support for it. The other uh, main bill that I have uh, would uh, ban uh, all guns from schools unless school districts wanted to have uh, people carry guns in schools. Right now, uh, the law says you can't carry a gun in, into a school, but there's an exemption for concealed handgun license holders. You have been working on this for so long. You have such a history in trying to actually reduce the amount of gun violence in our society. What keeps me going is I know the public is with me. And what, what happened after Sandy Hook and after Clackamas is the public now, they've been, been there all along, they're now speaking up. Uh, gun owners are speaking up. Most gun owners are perfectly fine with anything I'm trying to do, but that extreme fringe makes life very, very uh, unpleasant for people. Gun advocates gathered at the Oregon State Capitol today. People came out in support of gun rights. Called a patriot rally, they say no to new regulations like the ones being considered this session, including a ban on big ammo magazines and assault-style rifles. All right, this really stinks being the shortest one working here. Okay, there you go. All right, so what's going to happen if those guys in there don't listen to us? We're going to have a lot of laws that really stink. I want to say to these people over here, who are you to stand up against the law of the land? What part of shall not be infringed don't you understand? And we need to take get rid of laws over there at the Capitol. Anytime you have some of these high profile events, Sandy Hook, Aurora, Clackamas Town Center, everybody's making a big deal about, you know, the gun control and take guns away from everybody and you know and, and let's limit magazine size, which that's that's not gonna solve any issues. Those were 10-round magazines. I would have had 50 rounds in that I could shoot off in less than probably two minutes. We need to get rid of the misrepresentation that the American gun owner is some hick that's sitting in the back woods. We're vegan. We're very alternative lifestyles and everything like that, but we're definitely for our freedoms and our rights. As soon as he is mentally able to comprehend what a firearm is and what it does, um, you know, physically, um, you know, I know he'd be more than able to pretty much now the sheer intelligence that he has, I mean, he's almost two, and I'm, I'm sure he'll be able to grasp the adult situation of it by, by four. When they collapse the economy, they don't want people to be able to defend themselves, so... <laughs> Who's they? Uh, the globalists, the elitists, they're the ones that, that run things, they're the ones pulling the strings. Why do I want to speak? I have a lot to say, and I've never really said it in front of a large group of people before, so I figured why not. We're all smart enough here to know that where there's more gun control, there is more crime. Even though I'm not big on the whole, oh, I need to go have some big old assault rifle. If I want one, I have the right to have one. Hey, go ahead. I saw a couple of pictures on Facebook. It had like Washington and Jefferson, and it says, hey, stop, we want our country back. And you know, I, I honestly think if they knew what was happening, they would just, they say, okay, Revolutionary War all over again, guys. We fought this once, let's do it again. Protect your Second Amendment! You want our guns? Come and get them! Within 24 hours, I had gotten online and contacted Mayors Against Illegal Guns. I sent emails to Brady. So within two days of Steve being shot, I was, I was already engaged. I've been a gun owner most of my life, and I mean, reasonably intelligent, but I, 
I just was trying to understand why these shootings occur, what motivates these people, why they choose these particular weapons, etc. And, and then understanding the laws, and that was baffling to me, how screwed up our laws are across the country. The fact that it was an assault weapon really got me angry, and as I was reading about stuff, I was just getting you know, a little more and more angry about it and upset about it, and the more I learned about the circumstances and how the guy got his gun and what the Oregon laws were, it was just getting me incensed. Paul Kemp, nice to meet you. The reason I'm here, my brother-in-law was one of the shooting victims at the Clackamas Town Center in December. I've gotten very involved in efforts to try to curb gun violence. I'm a registered Republican, I own a gun, I, I've hunted. I'm not gonna change any of that. I just, recent, a week before Steve was shot, I went and bought my son his first rifle. Being an ex-serviceman and a police officer, you may have a concealed weapons permit. I, I don't, but I store my guns with trigger locks and the ammunition I separate. Don't, I, a retired cop, I don't need a... Oh, you yeah, may yeah. not, okay. But I, in all, all right, as we speak, all my guns are locked in a safe at home. Yeah, well, this AR-15 that was stolen was not. It was just sitting out. I took a trip back to D.C. in February and got a chance to meet a lot of the other folks from who had lost children at Virginia Tech in Northern Illinois and University of Arizona and Sandy Hook and Aurora, Colorado and Columbine and it is simply not the laws themselves. I mean, there's mental health issues. Huge. Yeah, yeah. and there's other, other things, but what, what seemed to me a, a major part of it was, you know, the simple availability of the weapons. Hopefully, you know, there's a way to find some support from, from you on some of the measures that are gonna come through and, and yeah. button up some of the laws. In general, I'm not, in favor of a lot of new laws is because we're not enforcing the ones we have, but I'm willing to look at anything. Thank you. I, I'm Thanks really a lot. sorry for your loss. I Thanks. don't, I mean, there's, what can you say? I mean, there's, right. yeah, there's, and I can't imagine. Yeah, well, um, I appreciate your time. You and any time, and you know, anytime you get, you know, holler, we'll get you. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Probably it's typical with most politicians, you know, they're somewhat guarded in their comments and what they'll offer support to. But um, it would be more encouraging to hear some just outright support. In the 70s, the late 70s, I wrote a book called Rage which was about a school shooter who shoots his algebra teacher, holds his class hostage for a day. And uh, that was found actually in the locker of one school shooter, I think in Oregon. So I made the decision to withdraw the book from publication. When you find out that you wrote something that's been associated with acts of violence, there are a couple of ways that you can go. One way is to say, I had no responsibility for that. I just wrote a book. I didn't have anything to do with the shooting. Or you can say, uh, yeah, okay, I might have had some sort of influence on this. The question that you have to ask is, does this disturbed individual have access, easy access to a weapon to work out his fantasies with, his, his killing fantasies? My idea when I wrote Guns was, let's make it very, very difficult for people to get automatic and semi-automatic weapons. I mean, obviously, if we could stop killer tornadoes, we would. But somehow we're just sort of ex supposed to accept the idea that some guy with an AR-15 can go into your mall and light up the food court.
nice to meet you. You know, one of the first questions I had was that gun purchased legally? Was the gun dealer legal selling it? And does Oregon have a safe storage gun law? I mean, can the guy who owned it had the gun stolen from him, can he be prosecuted? Or can he be civilly charged? No, he can't. Oregon has no safe storage gun law. I don't know how much of a deterrent that is going to be. But none of these things will solve all the problems. No. But incrementally, they will reduce the number of occurrences. Right. There's a, there's a way we can discuss this with, with uh, rational people and prudent people. You know, The gun rights people aren't, aren't the criminals. They're, they're the people who are just uh, are concerned about losing their rights. We can, we can ensure that they keep their rights and still be able to control the weapons that are out there, to a degree. To a degree. And honestly, it's not a fail-proof thing, but certainly it will help a lot. It would have helped in our situation. Yeah, the whole thing might not have happened. Exactly. The sheriffs are requiring their deputies to lock up their guns. What does that tell you? This isn't something unreasonable. I mean, personally, I've just kept a baseball bat under my bed. Right. That's what I've always done. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. And I'm not sure how good that is because I'm a lousy baseball player. <laughs> I guess the thing today that struck me, you would think that some of these folks would be kind of outraged at what's happened. We got Clackamas in our own backyard, and then the slaughter of 21st graders and their teacher. If that doesn't, I don't understand why that doesn't outrage people. today we're trying to figure out an official name for for what we're doing it, it tie in like defenders of the republic defenders of the constitution the founding fathers valley forge fighting republic for a logo we could have a crossed crossed feather you know with an ink ink well yeah. there a crossed feather and an ink well and a um, we're, we're under a time crunch. right i like that idea. right now i wouldn't be too concerned about a logo because we are under such a time crunch because of what's been thrown at us i like the revolutionary i like the oregon oregon heritage defenders it's short simple to the point you know people will read the title and they'll get what it is it doesn't say anything about firearms right but where we lack like guns in the name, we can have it we in the symbol. Limit. You don't yeah. think symbol is strong, think about this symbol. That's very strong. I mean, yeah, know he was a genius. Every time I look at people the third rack, I think of the genius of the symbolism of it. All right, you know what? How about if we just table the name for right now and move on to more important yeah. business? Can you say one thing about that? You yeah. need to get away from that. Get messenger dog and messenger pigeon. Get away from this. Google we talked about that, actually. That's what you're going to have to do. We did. I brought we up talked about that. Get away from that internet. Yeah. They control it. We need to These rallies are Second Amendment rallies. They are, you know, gun rallies, but the overall big picture is you take away the Second Amendment, you're going to take away your First Amendment, your Fourth Amendment, and the rest of the Constitution is, yep. isn't going to be there, and that's what they're trying to do. We've always, always had guns. When I was little, my grandma had a 357 lay sitting by the bed. We shoot with them. My husband and my son go hunting. They keep it for safety, personal safety. See, Jake is the first line of defense. If they get past that, and then they see the sign. And if then they get past that, then the door's locked. And then if they get past that, then there's me with the gun. So I figure I've got four steps of home security. And they're free, so I don't have to pay a monthly fee or anything. <laughs> Just dog food and bullets. <laughs> the lady that lived over there, I was walking one of the dogs. And she says, why do you wear a gun? What are you scared of? And I said, nothing. If I took it off, I would be. <laughs> Oh. 
This is a, uh, a Mossberg 715T. It's a 22 uh, on an AR platform. It accepts detachable magazines right here. Um, it, it's got the rails, which all is for is to, uh, you know, mount attachments like this foregrip here, which all the foregrip is for is to, you know, uh, fire them stability, you know, keep it more stable. This is a flashlight laser, you know, it, it's dark, whatever you, you need to see, you turn on the flashlight. This uh, scope is to see farther, to shoot farther. The adjustable uh, buttstock, it, you just adjust it for your arm length. It, it's another thing, it gives you better control of the, of the gun. Same with the pistol grip. A lot of people are scared of the pistol grip, but all that does is just give you more control of the firearm too. It, you know, just because you have a pistol grip doesn't mean you can go and kill more people faster, you know. They see somebody go into a school or a mall with a gun that, that has a pistol grip and, uh, and rails and whatnot, and they think, oh, then that must mean that those guns are bad, which is completely false. This is what a, like a high caliber rifle will do, like the AK. That's handgun, that's a 22, 22, 22. Yeah, that's a part of a shotgun. It sends a pretty cool message when, you know, we have our pro gun rallies and we got thousands of people coming. And then they do their little anti-gun rallies and they got maybe 20, 40. Only put 10 in there. This is the start of a movement, people. I want to introduce the best friend that you have in the Oregon legislature, State Senator Jeannie Burden. When the issue comes home, it's time to act. And, and that's what we're doing now. So what I'd like to ask all of you to do is to become activists. When we are silent on this issue, the other side wins by default. We can be silent no more. I started work on the gun issue in 1996. I had always been annoyed that we couldn't as a society talk about reasonable gun laws. Virginia Marie Burdick. She's been talking about gun safety and, and gun uh, restrictions since I've known her. I can think of any other legislator who's been as much in the forefront or is such a strong voice as it is Jenny. I don't think anybody's close to her. We have language that refers to transfers between immediate family members not mm -hmm. having to be subject to the background check. And we want to broaden that out a little bit. And are we speaking to all of the bills? Focus on the guns and schools bill. Okay. Public education is, uh, is at risk. In my campaign, I was about stronger gun laws. Because of that, I felt uh, a sense of mission. It was very important for me to do it. Yeah. That's cute. They collected everything and kept it. So this is the stuff directed to the Forsyth family. This is stuff that's just kind of directed to both. Those are cards and stars for Cindy. They put together these books with notes and there's a book for each family. And then these were just different items left at the memorial. I thought this one was especially cool. That's awesome. This took somebody a while to do I that I can't one. believe people did this. <laughs> when they 
use these cosmetic girls. I'm sure Steve would stop and talk to them. Because <laughs> that was right near where his stand was. Yeah. So hard to look at. Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. It's seven minutes after the hour, and I'm in uh, one of the best places you can ever be on a Friday uh, for First Amendment Friday because we're making it a Second Amendment Friday. I'm at Northwest Armory on Southeast McLaughlin. This place is a madhouse today. It looks like, uh, you know, shopping day after Thanksgiving. Our business has been exponential amount of growth. There's been a lot more interest in personal protection uh, since uh, there's been a couple national tragedies. There's also been a lot more interest um, with the possibility of legislation and people concerned that they're not going to be able to get access to things that they used to be able to have access to. The Oregon legislature is considering four really bad bills. They would take away people's right to carry guns in various places, including one of them would limit your ability to carry in a school. If the janitor at Sandy Hook Elementary had carried a pistol and he heard the shooting down the hallway and people screaming and then saw a young man not in a police uniform running at him with an AR-15 and had shouted to the guy, stop, and then pulled his pistol out and shot Adam Lanza, would that have been a good thing or a bad thing? The folks like Jenny Burdick and those, you know, those nitwits, why would they think it would be a bad thing for people, legitimate law-abiding people, to carry a pistol in a school? The rally starts at noon. I'll be saying a few words and then introducing other legislators who are coming. Have you heard anything in the wind about any counter-protests? We expect a counter-protest, yeah. Do you guys have the, do you have like the little sleeves for the cups? We're going down to Salem because Ceasefire is holding a rally and uh, we're gonna go show them that they're not going to get away with what they're getting away with. And I urge, I urge our senators to send a message to Oregonians that the safety of our citizens, of our families, of our children is their top priority. Yeah. Yeah. Mom's command action is only three months old. We are more than 1,000 people in Portland, and we are more than 90,000 people nationwide. What if our citizens that fought against the British would have taken your stance, there wouldn't be a United States today. That's the end of the argument. So thank you all for coming. You guys are going to make a difference. You really are. The Second Amendment was created to keep the United States government in check. Yeah, this is to support government, not to combat the government. Uh, I think the people should be able to hunt. I think people should be able to target shoot. Only what but, you think but, they, but they do not need yeah, the weapons that are semi-military. You hunt with what you say is okay. You know, you, you just shout me down, so you're not, you're not reasonable people. If you want us to respect your opinion, but you won't respect ours. These pieces of legislation provide common sense gun control. The guy who just got killed, his wife in Texas, they had guns. It didn't stop I'm anti massacres of children. I'm, I'm anti uh, guns that have that are have no And if we would arm our teachers, we would have a lot less massacring done. So you're the, less 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 the more less guns, less less guns no. the more good guys, the more that good guys have guns. Oh, a gun in the hands of a good a person is not a bad it's thing. A gun. A gun in the hands of a bad person yeah, is a bad yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. More responsible lobby responsible and happy resident.
what we're going to do is we're going to do a series of panels. Right. You know, encourage all the gun owners you talk to to come wh I when am. the time comes. I am. I'm finding that people are pretty timid. Because these people have never stood up to the opposition. Yeah. You, you have years of experience. You're yeah, used true. to that kind of intimidation. You are about to hear just a very angry voicemail from someone out there. Ha ha, you stupid cunt. I have more guns than you can count. I'll never give them up. Fuck you. Received May 8th at 10. There you go. Yeah, I think we're good. Hitler and Stalin would be so proud of you. You guys are pathetic. You are a waste of the oxygen I breathe. It's just too bad that you people were starved from the nipple, or maybe you guys would have all your brain cells. Lynching is an extrajudicial execution carried out by a mob, often by hanging, but also by burning at the stake, unsigned. In Oregon, pro-gun advocates are intimidating lawmakers with threatening emails and video surveillance. Joining me now is Oregon State Senator Jenny Burdick. You canceled the town hall meeting, and then what did they do? I did, and I, when I canceled the town hall meeting, I didn't want to say anything inflammatory, so I just said the standard scheduling conflict. Well, they showed up at my house, and they, st they stayed in front of my house for two and a half hours taping everything I did, and then they put it on the web, and their point was that I didn't, in fact, have a scheduling conflict. But they ran my address, and they ran very threatening comments about it. Was that all right? Yes, you were good. <laughs> wow, I didn't know any of that was going on. My goodness. Yeah. Watching you take out your dress. It was really creepy. Ooh. I'm not too happy about them coming into the Capitol. My team and I provided physical security for Senator Burdick on probably three or four occasions in the Portland area. People had confronted her. In one case, she was walking to her car and somebody jumped out of the brush. Certainly, uh, we really took this quite seriously when Congresswoman Giffords was shot in Tucson, Arizona. You know, how do you know something like that's going to happen? So we believed at that point that uh, she had a legitimate right to be concerned about her welfare. She's a public figure. People understand that public figures don't really have privacy. I think Jenny Burdick's a bitch. She had what's coming to her. I think if she's that scared, she should just step down. She should just get over it and move on and uh, quit her job because nobody likes her. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all, by the way. <laughs> oh, I was going to show you this now. This one was my very first tattoo. That one's my flag. I did that on myself. It's the uh, heritage stuff. I have a lot of family from the south and whatnot. So, yeah. Lawmakers plan a marathon public hearing on four bills. They include a ban on guns in schools and criminal background checks for private gun sales. So we should be there by, this is telling me 7.30. I mean, hopefully this will be a good forum and people will be open to everyone's message um, on, on all sides of the issue. None of us can replace Steve, but we can try to make things better. Back in January, my friend invited me to this community meeting about gun safety. I literally just stood up there and said, hey, this is who I am. My mom was killed in the Clackamas Town Center. And silence swept the room. By just standing up and saying that, I'd made it real for everyone. 
I realized then in that moment, I do have a voice. Maybe I can make an impact. I want people to remember. I don't want people to forget uh, that people were murdered and, and how they were murdered and that we need to uh, change the cycle of violence that seems to be going on in our communities. Big day. Hit it. Politicians uh, back down just because they don't want to take the harassment. And that is what uh, results in no change. And I just refuse to be intimidated because I can't in good conscience, after Newtown, back down. This issue is very simple to members of the public. But somehow when you get into the charged environment in this building, it becomes more difficult. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm going ahead and open up the Senate Committee on Judiciary. Uh, this morning we have four bills that are before us that we're going to be taking public uh, testimony. Each of these bills have amendments that will change the actual purpose of the bills. In conducting today's hearing, I ask that everyone be respectful to the speakers and their views, even though you may disagree with those positions. And I think it's very important that we have this hearing today to decide on what, if anything, will be moving forward. Senate Bill 700 would finish closing the loophole to require background checks for all um, gun sales. These bills will do nothing but target law-abiding citizens. They're not going to affect the criminals. They don't solve any of the problems that we've had. The fact that this state continues to allow the private sale of guns without background checks is reckless, irresponsible, and downright dangerous. None of these bills will keep the guns out of hands of a single criminal or madman. If more people had been killed at Clackamas Town Center, we would have a more comprehensive law. We're legislating in reaction to a tragedy that won't prevent. It is true, criminals will always get guns, but let's make it harder for them. For women and those with disabilities, guns are the great equalizer. Senate Bill 347 would allow school districts, rather than one advocacy group or another, to decide what really is a safe school. There is no place in our schools but guns. Gun-free zones might as well be advertised as potential killing zones. Students were almost unanimous in their opinion that their sense of security would not be enhanced with additional weapons on site. You need somebody at the school to stop that person. The laws we have and the systems we have in place do not work. The NRA can spread their money around and their influence, but it's only you folks, the legislators, that can write and pass the laws that we all live by. All right, thank you very much. And our next panel, please come forward. None of these bills would have stopped the shooter that killed my mother at Clackamas Town Center. Still, it is an important action for this legislature to demonstrate that they are serious about making our community safer. Reducing gun violence is a complicated issue, but that is not an excuse for inaction. I'm here today in hopes of opening a dialogue on gun safety. Please don't make the same assumption that I did, believing that this couldn't happen to me. It could easily have been your wife, your husband, your daughter, or your son. Do you remember Katrina? You remember 9-11? What happened? Overnight, nothing mattered. Politics didn't matter. Where you were from didn't matter. People would do anything to help the people. That's never happened since this terrible tragedy in Connecticut. It didn't happen. And I knew when it didn't happen, I mean, if you slaughter children the way they were slaughtered, and you slaughter six students, six teachers who are trying to defend their bodies and defend them the way they were slaughtered, and that can't bring us together instantly, then my friend, this thing will never come together.
There are now six state associations and 262 individual sheriffs who are on record opposing any new gun control legislation. This week, the sheriffs of five Oregon counties sent out letters that they would not support laws passed by Congress that trump the liberties of citizens. It's addressed to Vice President Joe Biden. I will not tolerate nor will I permit any federal incursion within the exterior boundaries of Grant County, Oregon, where any type of gun control legislation aimed at disarming law-abiding citizens is the goal or objective. As sheriff for Grant County, I too will publicly state that I will refuse to participate or stand idly by while the people I represent are made into criminals due to your unconstitutional actions. This is my basic police class uh, back in the late 80s when I went to the police academy. Things are happening in our country right now that 40, 50 years ago it was unthinkable about people, the mass casualties and the killings and the bombings and um, I don't like it either but I think the people need to take responsibility into their own hands and be prepared. I heard one uh, talk show one time they were talking about well if our government has nukes do you propose that you have nukes and uh, my thought was if they're going to use a nuke against me I would like to have a nuke to level the playing field. You know, it's, it's a little unrealistic, but let's, let's be realistic that if our government or anybody else is gonna use a tank against us, it would be nice to know that I have the same ability to protect the people that have elected me into office, that I could step to that same level. I don't anticipate ever wanting or having to have a tank or the use for one, but if somebody was to use one against me, it would be in our, in our best interest to be able to defend ourselves, and that's what the Second Amendment's all about. I'm not in the camp of anti-government, but I think less government intervention into our lives would be a good thing. And I think there's a big divide there between you know what we call Western Oregon or the Valley, the Portland area, and rural Oregon. A lot of what we get from the politicians is a knee-jerk reaction. I don't have a tremendous amount of ease in how they do things. And I think the, the gun control, whatever you want to call it, is a very good example of that. Killed that pine cone. I don't know that the solutions to lessen the chance of a Sandy Hook type incident is going to come from gun control. I think it's much deeper than that. Do I know what the answer is? No, because there's, uh, I think it's a very complicated, very complex problem. Guns were part of it. We have to decide what we're willing to accept on both sides of the fence. You know, are we willing to accept what happened, you know, in these different instances? If not, then what are we willing to accept, you know, laws and rules to lessen the potential of that happening again? We live in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. David and I have two sons. Our older son, Nate, soon to be 10 years old, is a fourth grader at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Our younger son, Ben, age six, was murdered in his first grade classroom on December 14th, exactly four months ago this weekend. I've heard people say that the tidal wave of anguish our country felt on 1214 has receded but not for us. To us, it feels as if it happened just yesterday. Please help us do something before our tragedy becomes your tragedy. We have to convince the Senate to come together and pass common sense gun responsibility reforms 
that will make our communities safer and prevent more tragedies like the one we never thought would happen to us. Help this be the moment when real change begins. I talk about making a difference. What went through your mind watching that, Jim? Pain. The pain. And how she was able to, you know, rise above her own pain to try to keep others from having to experience pain. More than 3,000 people have died since Sandy Hook. And every single one of them had families who were experiencing that pain and she's trying to do something about it. Um, even though she's in desperate pain herself. I really admire her. How does it make you feel watching her stand up like that so publicly? Well, it certainly, it certainly drives me. Um, you know, I, I'm a legislator and I haven't had this kind of loss in my family, knock on wood. But people are depending on me and my colleagues to keep them safe and to have reasonable gun laws so that this kind of thing won't happen again. And now I need to find a Kleenex. I tell you, um, flipping vote today, I couldn't believe it. I thought for sure the Senate would, would do it. A few months ago, can't be different there. In response to too many tragedies, this country took up the cause of protecting more of our people from gun violence. A few minutes ago, a minority in the United States Senate decided it wasn't worth it. We had a Democrat and a Republican, both gun owners with A grades from the NRA, come together to write a common sense compromise on background checks. In fact, even the NRA used to support expanded background checks. But instead of supporting this compromise, the gun lobby and its allies willfully lied about the bill. Those lies upset an intense minority of gun owners, and that in turn intimidated a lot of senators. After I saw the vote didn't pass, I just was absolutely crushed and thought that all the senators, the entire Senate, should be ashamed of itself. If those kind of weapons were less available or harder to get, we wouldn't have a lot of these shootings, and we certainly wouldn't have the number of deaths. I'm convinced of that. Um, I met with Przansky and he gave me an update on what's going on. Yeah. So basically what this move means is the Senate president has actually taken the bills and referred them to the Rules Committee without sending them to the floor first. Because he thinks that they won't pass in the floor. Right. He, he doesn't think they have the votes. I disagree. We're talking about people who are going to be running for re-election. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing for the Republicans because the Republicans know 
that the president does not like to bring guns, uh, bring guns, bring bills to the floor mm -hmm. without the votes to pass. So naturally, they're going to say, "We're not going to vote for it," hoping to keep it off the floor altogether. Okay. Because then, if they don't have to vote, then oh, they can hide from the issue. I see. background checks is like, that seems like a no-brainer to me. I don't know why we're even, like, having a vote about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were disappointed that there weren't, like, stronger bills on the table. So the fact that these really, I mean, honestly, they're really weak bills, can't even get passed. It's sad that they can't get passed. This is what happens when you have a child with lots of medical problems. Alright. I'm putting all of these in one so you don't yeah. have to worry Mom. about it. He has scoliosis and he just had surgery in August. This one right here they did was that he has spondylolisthesis, spondylolisthesis and he has an extra vertebra. So instead of sitting like this, it sat like this. And it was cutting off blood flow and nerves and all of that. He is a high-functioning autistic. I wish I could see the world like he sees it for one day. The, the hearing things that normal people don't hear, seeing things that normal people don't see. He's, he sees details that we don't, and he hears things that we don't. And I, I, I would love to see the world as he sees it. Because he, he picks up everything. He feels things that we don't feel temperature variations and differences and textures and smells and it's awesome. I never, ever, ever want him to be, quote, normal because kids with autism rock. <laughs> he shot BB guns, he shot 22s, he shot, you know, 25s and all that. He talks about he wants an AK. <laughs> I don't know if I want to spend that much money, <laughs> but yeah, he has he has his own guns, and when he gets better and gets healthy, and where he can stand up for a long period of time and handle the recoil, we'll go shooting. Eleven eighteen, busy day today. Biggest story in our city for sure. It's a one-year remembrance of the Clackamas Town Center shooting. Cindy Yule lost her life there. She was a hospice care nurse. Her daughter Jenna is in the studio with us. How are you doing a year later? I don't know. Not great, honestly. Um, are you angry? I, I would be so curious. Yeah. yeah. Someone asked me the other day if I will ever be able to forgive this person who killed my mom? The answer is no. Jenna, I hope everything gets better. Thanks. I really do. We'll be out there tonight, 5.30, candlelight vigil, Clackamas Town Center. I hope you come down. At this time of the year, malls around the country are packed with parents and children. Many of them are going to see Santa. And for a lot of families who were here at the Clackamas Town Center one year ago tonight, that magical moment turned tragic. Jenna, are you going to speak first? We are gathered here this evening because a year ago today, my mom and Steve were murdered. Right here at this mall.
My mom was absolutely amazing. She was kind and generous and accepting. I don't know how to express the depth of how much we miss her every day. This last October, my sister-in-law, Jessie, she was brutally murdered. She was shot in the head by her, her husband, who she was in the middle of a divorce with. She got a restraining order. Not too long after, he forced his way into her house and shot her in front of her two young daughters. I was asked afterward by several people, Chris, doesn't that change how you see gun control? I always responded with, absolutely not. My wife is over there selling shirts to raise money for domestic violence awareness in her sister's name. Can you go back to that, that day? Well, we were getting ready to watch the football game and, sorry. <laughs> that day's hard. So we were getting ready to watch the football game. The Ducks were playing, and I, was, I got a call from my mom, and she said that there was a shooting over in Jesse's apartment, and we didn't know where Jesse was. And at first, I was like, okay, so there was a shooting. Didn't know it was Jesse. Uh, we didn't really know anything. And then um, we called around to the hospitals, and they told us where she was at, and we found her. And I was the first one there to see that she was shot in the head. If her address was concealed a little better, it probably could have at least slowed it down. But I think the biggest thing that would have helped is if she was armed. The ridiculousness of the gun grabbers has gotten to epic proportions, people. How many of you guys have heard of the board game Clue? You've got the pipe wrench, the lead pipe, the rope. Guess what? The revolver piece that was less than a half inch big offended a parent and they removed it. I think they have forgotten. We are the boss. They work for us. What we say goes, not what they say. on you, motherfucker. We're looking for you. I tell you, you get every inch of fucking shit coming to you. I tell you, burn and rot in the flaming depths of fucking hell. Why do you think there isn't much civil dialogue on this? Why has it become so polarized? And is there a middle way? Is there a middle ground somewhere that we can find? You know, after Newtown, I thought there was a middle ground. I thought, we're going to ban these clips, these uh, multiple shot clips. That's going to happen. 
and we're going to get background checks. But then both of those things were blocked. Those things never happened. And I sort of lost hope. And I think a lot of people have lost hope. There really doesn't seem to be a middle ground. And one of the things that I tried to establish in, in guns was that there should be a middle ground. I still think something simple is best, like maybe something like this, where it's just the simple outline of the state. And then just get rid of the background color if you just had the right. outline and that was it. Right. The gun control movement needs to understand it takes a long time, it takes persistence, it takes patience, but it takes constant advocacy. Mothers Against Drunk Driving was started in 1980. It was one small change after one small change, and one small change might occur in one state, and then another state would adopt that tougher penalties for offenders, more prevention programs, lowering the illegal limit for drunk driving. I have seen a similarity between some of the tactics I think the NRA is using uh, compared to some of the tactics that the alcohol and hospitality industry used in our fight, particularly to lower the illegal drunk driving limit. The alcohol industry initially in Illinois said absolutely not. They are going to take away uh, your glass of wine at dinner. They are going to make a criminal out of somebody who has a cocktail. All these bars and restaurants are going to have to close. We were able to prove that those claims were, number one, not true. And number two, once we did pass the law, the hospitality and alcohol industries joined with us to promote the law. So it will be great if at some point the NRA joins with the gun control advocates and says, let's do work together on this, and we can find common ground. If it seems there is a shooting in a school every week now, a group that keeps count says there nearly is, about one a week since Newtown. The latest happened just hours ago near Portland, Oregon, and it was deadly. They say the shooter that went into that high school this morning is dead along with one student. That shooting began just after 8 o'clock this morning, just as students were getting started with their day. A very active scene and a community in shock after a shooting in Troutdale at Reynolds High School. My first reaction was, not again. And then my second reaction was to get really mad. Somebody was raising a child in a house with an AR-15 and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. What kind of uh, message was that child being sent living in a house like that? Yeah, they have a Second Amendment right to do it, and we got two dead kids to show for it. And I just feel a sense of personal failure. What could I have done to make a difference? Um, and that haunts me all the time. We have to work harder. The sun it sets. And then doors shine in some other patch of sky. Here we sit, neath friendly dome, hand in hand.
down the road. This is the aftermath of gun violence. But I truly believe that we can have our guns and we can do so responsibly. It shouldn't be that hard. So it goes. Here's how it shakes out. First, there's the shooting. Second, the initial TV news reports, accompanied by flourishes of music and dramatic breaking news logos. Third comes confirmation that it's not a false alarm. Fourth, the first video. It's always from a cell phone. Fifth, the first on-scene news reports, filed by those local reporters who must sub until the A-team arrives. One or more will use the phrase, as many as, followed by a number. Sixth, the correct equation, X dead, Y injured. Tenth, the shooter is identified correctly, and we get to look at a yearbook photo in which the guy looks pretty much like anybody. Fourteenth, recaps of previous shootings begin. Seventeenth, the NRA announces they will have no comment until the details become clear. 18th, politicians decree a national dialogue about gun control. 21st, any bills to change existing gun laws quietly disappear into the legislative swamp. Twenty-second, it happens again and the whole thing starts over. That's how it shakes out. I don't know if anybody will remember that essay 50 years from now or anything else that I have written or might write in the future about guns. But if they do, the only thing I'd, I'd like is for somebody to say he was on the right side of the issue. And I hope I am. I believe that I am. But of course, belief is part of the problem here, isn't it? I mean, there's strong belief on, on both sides. Tonight, every town is having their kickoff event. <laughs> I get to the point a lot where I'm like, uh, nothing's changing, you know, same old, same old. And then I'll do these little things and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I can make a difference. So we're about to start the next session. We are really hoping to pass some bills finally. Ready?
gun bill took center stage in Salem today, and Senate Bill 941 passed by just a few votes after several hours of debate. I think the stakes are higher because it's gotten out of the Senate. A lot of anxious folks, one way or the other. So it's a big deal. The bill's never gotten this far. I want to thank everybody for coming. We're going to work as hard as possible to make sure that everybody is able to get their voice heard. Despite the continuing incidents of gun violence in our own state, Oregon lawmakers have failed to fix problems in our gun laws. That is an embarrassment, and it's time for a change. We are about to reach the culmination of a 20-year, close to a 20-year uh, process. Good morning, colleagues. Happy Monday to everyone. The House will come to order. Representative Williamson moves adoption of the committee report on Senate Bill 941. It closes the loophole in Oregon's 25-year background check law for selling and transferring firearms. When I realized that things might actually change was when we were in a balcony and actually voting on it. Clerk will open the voting system. In today's climate, it is almost infreaking possible to pass any kind of gun safety reform, but Oregon is bucking the national trend. <laughs> it's too late for Steve, it's too late for Cindy, it's too late for others, but it will have a positive impact and it will save lives down the road. There's no question about it. There we go. We have accomplished something and something that uh, we did with Cindy in our minds. She was a remarkable woman. She was a very strong advocate for justice and for things that are right. She'd be really proud. She would be. It's weird to think about stuff like that. Like, I wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for her death. But, um, but yeah, no, she would be really proud. She'd be cheering us on, totally. There is a lot happening in our country. It's just not happening as fast as some people would like, including me. But it's, it's happening. I don't see myself backing away from this issue for quite a while. There's too much at stake. It takes time to change things around. I've learned to accept that. Yeah, but change does come as long as you're per, uh, persistent. It's turning more and more into an issue for people. Every one person that's killed affects the whole community. I don't accept the idea that mass shootings have to be a part of American life. In the morning when you rise, oh, you 
Somewhere 